Past the groom. Brian Georges now knows this possession might be the biggest of the season so far for Mares. Trailing by two. He goes to Viani. Viani, a double screen from Fitz and Johnson. Comes around the left side. Keeps her dribble now, guarded by Gaskin. Top of the key to Spock. Plenty of time, 13 on the shot clock. Perone down the lane, hands to Fitz. Beautiful handoff on the penetration and scores it. And Rachel Fitz now has come up with two huge baskets on back-to-back -back possessions as Maris has tied the game. And wisely enough, Joe Frigger will burn a timeout with this game tied at 62. Mike, I mean, it's one of the Thank you to Dustin and Mike from WMAR, the Maris student radio station. Accurately detailing a 62-62 tie. Timeout from the Fairfield bench. There you see the timeouts remaining. 53.7 left. Lauren Groom scored a great bucket inside off a of feed. And then Elise Perron sets up Fitz to get the equalizer. Right, and great observation by the young men on the radio station that they need to get the ball to Fitz. Uh, they, and they did, and that's why they're tied. But this may come down to whoever has the last possession. Fitz averaging 21 a game. She's got 22 for the 10th time this year. She scored 20 or more in a ball game. Obviously, it doesn't take a, a real brain scientist to figure it out, but low on. If you're Maris, you want Kaskin taking that shot, but look at a hustle by Kaskin to go get the missed shot. She's a great rebounding guard. Good call here. Nowhere to go with the ball. Good heads up play. Joe Frager working his huddle. 10-year overall coaching record, 221 and 100. Winning mark is 69, uh, 69%. Division two, he spent time at Southern Connecticut State, won 189 games, won a Division two title back in 2007. Got the job at Fairfield replacing Diane Nolan. And Ryan George is with his auto. Yes, and I, I think you'll see them take the first good available shot. I don't think you'll see them run this down until the last five or six seconds. If they have a good look, they're going to take it. It will be Alan Spock, Karan Fitz, Johnson, and Viani on the floor for Maris. Interesting, we haven't seen this all game. Is a little. They switch out with Kaskin down to the final ten. A lot of dribbling for Viani. Hit Fitz in the hands, and the Stags get the ball with one, one second. second. That was a hard pass for Fitz to receive, and just couldn't gather it in. to Kaskin, but she'll hold it, and we'll go to overtime. And he chooses not to try to get off the last second shot, but hopefully overtime will be as exciting and as great as the regulation. You see Rachel Pitts holding her head a little bit. Maris has been put to the extra limit now. Five minutes in overtime. Tied at 62, regulation. We'll be back with the extra period after this. Here at our remote test facility, we put the Nissan Altima through over 5,000 extreme tests to help ensure long-lasting quality and durability. Of course, you'd never treat yours that way, right? Sorry. The Nissan Altima, made to drive, built to last. Get 1,500 cash back or lease a new Nissan Altima for $199 a month. How can the oil industry in the North Sea impact fishing markets in Japan, marine legislation in the U.S. Biotti looking for Fitz. Fitz had a chance to win it. Couldn't handle the pass from Biotti in the final couple seconds. And Fairfield dodged one right there. He did a rare mishandle by Fitz. One of the things I like most about her game is that she catches almost everything that comes her way. That's a bailout right there for Maris as they were in no man's land with two on the shot clock and a foul. And a foul. Moore picks up her second personal. We'll keep an eye on that team free throw situation. Eight fouls on Maris, six now on Fairfield. That's the reason for the throw in. Bit sets the screen for Karan. Karan not known for her outside shooting. The dump down to Fitz. A oh, nice great ball. block. And here we see Lowenthal. She can handle in the open court just like a guard. It's Meg Gaskin with the basketball. Last year, 156 assists to lead the team. 
And Moore scores as Karan fell down. Well, she's trying to lean on Moore down in the post, and Moore just stepped away and left her falling down. Moore with eight in the ball game, and Fairfield with four here in the overtime session. Looking for Fitz again. Here comes the double. Johnson on a three. Allen Spot tracked it down. Two minutes gone in the overtime. Fairfield by four and a reset now for Maris. Maris looks a little stagnant, but credit Fairfield's defense. I see a lot of uncertainty on their faces. Haven't been put in this position this year in another no, throw. No, they haven't. They're, they look like they're looking and searching for that person to take the shot. Joe Frager's got the thumb up for the play call. And you know he wants to milk the shot clock under five. Uh, under. Absolutely. And you know Maris wants to get the ball to fit, but I, Fairfield has done a tremendous job on her today. Alice Bach matches up on Kaskin. There's Lowenthal over Johnson. Allen spot, another rebound. This fits in an out game for Biani. Allen Spock, another rebound. Biani, another three. Well, it may not be Maris's day. Those shots are usually one that Biani will stick in the goal. And a timeout from the Frager bench. Fairfield up by four with the basketball with 1.45 left. Okay. Last possession here by Maris, the double down by Lowenthal, and then a good block out by Guillen. And just a uh, great hustle. With Lowenthal being so athletic, you can double down with her because then she can hedge back out on the perimeter. She can double down and then recover because she had to recover back out to Viani. Fox's 14 consecutive wins. Again, active win streaks on the line. 35 game conference games. They've won in a row. 36 here at the McCann Center. And being challenged by Fairfield. Log on to ESPNU.com and search Campus Connection to join the ESPN community. Go back to school for ESPNU Campus Connection Week. You can send comments and upload photos from your favorite school. Log on to ESPNU.com, search Campus Connection. Dean, I can't say enough about the poise that Fairfield has exhibited here today. I mean, it's a tough place to come in here and win, knowing how much success that Maris has had in this arena. I haven't won here in this building. In Great effort, though, by Karan today. She did not feel well at practice yesterday, and some question is how much she might play in this game. Two big mates by Elise Karan. Six on the afternoon. It's a two-point ball game. This is Gian. We got Johnson playing on Lowenthal. Shot clock dwindles under 10. I think with that matchup, Lowenthal has to attack the basket. Kaskin oh, great finds drive Groom. by Kaskin. Groom has hit two big buckets here late in this one in regulation and overtime. Created by the dribble drive of Kaskin. Nine for Groom. 65 ticks left in the first overtime. Looking for Viani, but she's being shadowed by Moore. Viani hooks up Fitz. Fitz puts it on the floor. Gian hits her, and she'll shoot two. Fitz is really battling in there. <laughs> She goes up, 
follows her own miss. Did a great job with a little pump fake to draw the foul. Duran earlier hit two. Fitz misses that. And a look of disbelief as she backs off the line. Fitz struggling a bit at the free throw line. Normally an 81% shooter, four for seven. Take it five for eight. Full possession lead for the Stags. With about 11 second differential between the shot and the game clock. Well, I think they want to use as much as they can. Milk that clock all the way down. Gregor gets the word out to Lowenthal to clear out on Fitz. Groove, big one. Wow. Hadn't made a shot wow. like that all day from the outside. She just made her dad really proud. 12 today for Groom. Barris loses it on the sideline. And again, another defensive effort by Fairfield. That was textbook perfect. Lowenthal the clear out. You think she's going inside. The dump to the corner. The conversion by Groom. And now Barris forced the foul. You could see it in their faces in the fair. They 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 almost believe. They almost believe that they have this one. Fairfield losing 11 consecutive times to Maris. Maris, the defending champs of the back, four out of the last five years, including three in a row. Fairfield with a veteran squad, and they have really looked at the veterans here in overtime. Kaskin, Lowenthal, and Groom. I thought. Coach Frager did a great job, as I said, stealing some minutes from his bench. They held their own. They didn't give up anything. No runs by Maris. And now he's got his veterans back in the game. Viani, last second three. Fitz tracks it. Another one from Viani. And Fairfield. With the ball gone out of bounds. We get the ball with a half a second. And again, Gian, Gian changed both those shots by Viani. Just by the length. And her range. What a win by the Fairfield Stags, ending Maris's 14 game win streak. Congratulations to Fairfield and the coaching staff. Maris's home winning streak comes to an end in Mac play at 36 games. And Fairfield beats Maris for the first time in nearly six years as Joe Frager congratulating the Maris players. They meet again February 12th in Fairfield. But Fairfield has come to Poughkeepsie today and made a statement. Final score, Fairfield 73, Maris 65. Bindu Lowenthal, our Pepsi Mac player of the game. 21 points, 8 of 14 from the field, 10 boards, a double-double for Bindu. Once again, our final score, Fairfield 73, Maris 65. For Mike Orion and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dean Darling. Coming up next on ESPNU, College Football Live. Then at 7 Eastern, more college basketball from the back. They come back to Poughkeepsie as the Canisius men will go up against Maris. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from Poughkeepsie, New York, as Fairfield upsets Maris in Poughkeepsie. Five step drop going deep far sideline throw. Wow! Crushed. Touchdown, Florida! The Florida Gators have won their second BCS championship in three years. Tim Tebow's ready for another run. Find out how the Gators D could steal the headlines. And the SEC has dominated the landscape the last three years. What's different in 09? You get it next on College Football Live. Out of the tunnel here on College Football Live, Colt McCoy's roommate and main target, Jordan Shipley, will miss spring practice for Texas. Shipley underwent shoulder surgery on Friday. The all-Big 12 receiver caught 89 balls in 2008. Another player granted a six-year East Carolina's Patrick Pinckney. He is coming back. The quarterback played a key role in the Pirates' 17 victories the last two years. Keeping Pinckney is a big plus for Skip Holt's squad in 09. 
former Pitt Panther LaShawn McCoy.